Hello and welcome for another holistic creative chat. Today's guest is Becky Swanson. She is a coach, a guide, a yogini and yoga teacher, and a mother. <laughs> welcome, Becky. Hi. <laughs> I'm so glad you agreed to have this chat with us. So we Me too. Yeah. So we come here to talk about creativity, um, healing as I put it, but mostly about this notion of holistic creativity, which is um, something I'm very passionate about exploring and helping others um, gain a felt sense of in their life. And I'm going to ask you a question that I um, I don't always start with because this is coming right off of your site. All right. And so I want to just dive into okay. this because I think it will be relevant for some people for sure. And you say on one of your pages that um, striving for balance doesn't work for you and that you actually find it more stressful? Mm -hmm. I think it's um, my perfectionist nature. Um, I, it seems like whenever I try to, um, okay, I've got to get everything perfect. I gotta get, I've got to get everything in order, and I want to try to have balance here and balance here. And it just feels <clears throat> um, stressful to me. Yeah. And I remember um, one of the first times I realized this, <clears throat> excuse me, I was actually working with a friend who, who just had just become a life coach and she had me do the wheel, you know, the, the wheel, of all the different, you know, parts of your life. Mm -hmm. and so she was like, okay, well, we want to try to get all of like, you know, you rate where you're at. And so we want to try to get all of these little dots on the outside of the wheel. So we have a nice circle, nice, yeah. perfect circle. So, um, which it all makes sense. It completely does. Um, but so she, I agreed to work on certain things throughout the week or however length of time to try to create that. And I kind of drove myself crazy <laughs> because it was just, it just, it was too much. And I guess I put this internal pressure on myself anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's what tends to do it. It's mm -hmm. that, it's just that internal pressure wanting to make sure I'm doing what is right or what I think or it's perceived to be ideal. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't, yeah, that's me. But I, I love that. I think there's, there's so many potent things that will speak to so many people. It speaks to me. I can completely relate to it. Like doing exercises and tools like that can be very, very useful on one hand, but like you're saying, then when we go and we make it like this, um, this thing that we're striving to somehow meet an ideal or meet a standard or whatever it is that we've built in our mind as the concept of where we're supposed to be. That's right. when it becomes this extra pressure. Right. And, and so I don't know about you, but like, I find that, you know, what's more beneficial, it's beneficial to do those things I find because then I can go, okay, yeah. so I'm going to bring a little more attention here because I'm not right. bringing enough attention here. You right. Know, but to bring the check-in into like the moments of the day to day, like, whew, okay, I'm leaning this way right now, but I feel okay. Or, you know, whew, I'm leaning this way. And actually I, I really think I'm kind of yearning for a little bit more of this. So I know. like that. Yeah. I like that with the day, day to day. I actually use that tool mm -hmm. now, but I create more like now we create like a flower mm -hmm. out of it so that it, the flower is going to be a little, you know, one petal might be bigger than oh. the other, and that's okay because, you know, nature mm. isn't perfect. You know, there's not that sense of perfection. And I like to look at it seasonally, so, mm -hmm. or sometimes monthly. Yeah. Um, but I kind of look at it more like, um, and then if I'm working with someone, this is how I kind of encourage them as well. But, you know, maybe this part of my life isn't like a perfect 10 or whatever, but it's not really calling me right now. It's fine the way it is. That's not where I'm drawn to do some work. I really yeah. want to work on this pedal or this part. Um, so hmm. it's more about, like you said, how it feels. What am I wanting to work on? What am I wanting to shift or change? Um, and the other parts are okay. They might not be super, super wonderful, but they're fine. They're fine where they're at. So it's, Yeah, it's not where the um, juice is. It's not where the energy yeah, is for you. I yeah. love that. Yeah. yeah. And that leads right into me. That's creativity, like in a nutshell, is like following that energy and following that juice. And so when I ask you the question, like, what does your creative practice look like right now? What comes up for you? Hmm. Well, it's it's definitely not it's not what I'd like it to look like. And yet it's like what you just said. It's definitely more about 
my life, what I'm creating in my life right now, not so much um, getting the paints out and doodling and watercolors and making jewelry and things like that. That's mm -hmm. what I would love it to look like, but mm -hmm. it just it's just not there right now. But that is definitely, if I was doing my little flower, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the area I would want to grow. Mm -hmm. I'd want to grow that. Or just, I, I want to create, that's what I'm moving into next as far as probably more like summer is mm -hmm. making that part of my day or week for mm -hmm. sure. But right now it is the, uh, more about um, self-care, mm -hmm. ways to bring create that that creativity in for me. So maybe if I'm even just doing my newsletter, how can I bring cre creativity into that? If I get to, I'm making, um, I'm doing some yoga and essential oil workshops I just started. So I get to create like the image and the flyer for that. So for me, that I, that's my way of being creative. So it doesn't look the way I might like it to look, but I'm still finding those ways to, to, to bring creativity in. Absolutely. So. It's, it's in all facets of our life. And I, lo right. I love that you recognize that. And because then we can yeah. pull that energy, even that part of us that might wish we were making more paintings. That's my story. Or, or you know, or doing our jewelry or whatever, have whatever right. it is that we do. And we can say, okay, well, I have that energy and I have that juice. And I can apply it to these things I need to do in, you know, in my home with my family and, and what have right. you. Right. And, and then it becomes in for me, I know what that is. It's it's like grounding again, grounding in the present moment. Yes. And, yes. And then mentioning that, that brings up just, you know, baking or cooking. Sometimes mm -hmm. um sometimes it's I don't think of it so much as the creative energy, which I'm so glad you mentioned it because it just makes me feel better. Like I am I am being creative. I don't yeah. you know, don't need to judge myself so much. But um grounding. Um because like you said, for me I get this the energy flowing and I kind of stay up here a lot and I'm mm -hmm. very um, excited about it or the thoughts just come and all the ideas and then I have to just get really grounded so yeah. I've kind of along the way I've discovered like baking mm -hmm. cooking um, get gardening there's just all di different things but mm -hmm. those Absolutely. certain things that are for me you know very grounding so but it also helps with being creative so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I agree. It's like body, body in, you know, our senses in and, yeah. and those two are two of my main ones too. And, and exercising for some people, I wish I could claim that one more, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I try. <laughs> but, oh, I love that. So when you are um, consciously bringing awareness to your creative energy, what are some of the strong themes, um, whether they be like around flow or around resistance? What are some of the things that you face mm -hmm. as someone who works with creativity? I would say both. Um, flow is a word I use a lot. Um, I teach a vinyasa style of yoga and mm -hmm. I just love, <clears throat> I just love to flow. And I love moving my body in that way, my breath. Um, I <clears throat> love the thought of my life being in flow and where I've got just this beautiful rhythm. And that is something I have not yet created mm. yet. Mm. Um, and I don't know if that's something that <clears throat> being a mom of three, if that's just something I need to let go of or mm. just create a whole new way of looking at the flow. But, mm -hmm. um, so, so for me, when I'm creating, <clears throat> um, and I'm thinking of flow, I'm thinking, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what my, what's going on my, with my voice. Um, I'm thinking in terms of what am I wanting to bring into my life? <clears throat> Where am I wanting to, to move and flow? Um, <clears throat> the resistance is huge for me. So it's like they work together. So mm -hmm. I focus on what is this that's holding me back? What is it that I'm resisting? How am I resisting that flow? Um, and the pieces of art that I do, or the, the usually there's words involved. So the messages have to do with that, mm -hmm. which is about removing that resistance or going around it in some way to find that flow, to move forward. Because that may even make sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you, you kind of led into what was kind of going through my mind as you started speaking about resistance. Um, 
you know, is this notion of like obstacle. And, and so, like you said, like go around, you know, and that instantly makes me think of, of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And, and I love too, that you acknowledge that, you know, you have this idea or ideal even of what flow might feel or look like in your life. And it, but it's not like a destination that you've reached and maybe even that you're aware that the way you're looking at it might not, you know, might even, you know, um, have to change in order for you to understand fully what flow might mean in the living of it. I love that. I love that flexibility in your perspective with it because I find that too. And and I, I guess I kind of like lean toward because I haven't experienced anything different that ultimately that it's like we have to... Um, we, we have to just kind of go with the flow that's presented to us that and part of it is like part of it is the drive to seek our idea of a of a flowing rhythm or what have you right, and, but that's right. what keeps us moving with the creative energy is that drive and that ache or that desire and I know for artists you know and I think I think everybody but artists I can relate to is that's what we feel constantly that's why we're constantly making the next piece or constantly feeling a little unsatisfied because it yeah. keeps us moving in the river of that energy and right yeah. yeah what an interesting dance it is <laughs> I know I for me I noticed that um well that like, maybe it's just where I'm at right now but it I a lot of the focus comes back to self-care and what mm. is because for me when I think about living in flow it's not so much um, it's definitely um, action as far as my you know schedule my rhythm but a lot of it's just how I feel it yeah. feels like everything's just in a good place and for me that usually means feeling healthy mm-hmm. mind body spirit um, and so learning how to take care of my body, uh, doing all the little things that I call them like your roots um, that support you, Mm -hmm. all those things that you have to establish first. Um, And then, of course, lately, I just finished writing about this. It's um, paying attention to my energy more and really honoring, like noticing, Mm -hmm. does this make me feel good? Does this uplift me? Does this feed me? Or is this feel draining? Mm -hmm. Um, because I've kind of gotten myself this past, the past several months into um, a position of just kind of putting, saying yes to lots of things and thinking I needed to be busy, that that meant I was Mm -hmm. really, wow, I'm really doing stuff or I'm really, I don't know what, it just meant that I was busy. (laughs) Yes. It seemed to feel like, hey. I'm doing something. I'm important. And, and all it's done is it has worn me down because yeah. I said yes to things that were not filling me up. They, they sounded good and looked good and seemed, um, you know, approved, you know. Yeah. So anyway, this um, is really, this is really important stuff, Becky. And I think it's what so many of us, particularly, um, creative women entrepreneurs, what, we face mothers too i mean i think we face it in all facets of our life but i think what i sense right now in this time particularly with this way we can reach one another globally so easily which we're blessed with that um in our culture but is that women are really defining redefining rather what what success looks like and Mm -hmm. what a sense of fulfillment looks like in service in the world And to me, it's all really intricately related to family and community and, you know, supporting one another in a way that we all feel like, um, you know, hey, I have this to offer. And right now it feels good. My energy's in it. And I can do that for this person or these people. And then when I'm feeling a little drained or whatever, I know I can lean a little on them and reach out and they're going to lift me up. So there's that energy uplifting and thing that we can find through our connections and through that discernment in ourselves of where we're leaking energy, like you're talking about. Right. It's it's huge. It's a huge topic. It really is. It really is. It's, it's everything. I mean, I went from feeling so expansive and excited and I, what happened was my youngest child went to kindergarten this year. So this was like, 
such an opportunity. It felt like <laughs> I love my children dearly, but you know, I am the type that I need my time. I need my quiet time. I need my time just to create. And um, I have three kids and it's been my oldest is 10 years. So, <laughs> so this was like, wow, I have all this time open yeah. up and space. And then what did I do? Filled it up. And it happened. I filled it up. Yeah. And I get kind of gave it away. And I didn't even mm. realize it. I really kept thinking, oh, because I'd look at my calendar like, okay, I can do that. Because then I've got. So, yeah. I, I totally get it. There's uh, That's such important medicine right there. Just acknowledging the space when we have it and allowing ourselves to be in it for a bit before we. Yeah fill it up so yeah. quick I'm the same way oh, I just yeah. with that if I'm not thinking if I'm not in a good place or you know being in centered I'll do that too I just fill it in without thinking about it mm-hmm. it's just such a yeah. pattern you know right it is it really is um, but it's been a huge uh, lesson yeah so yay hopefully. for the learning <laughs> <laughs> it's not always fun but oh, definitely yeah. necessary <laughs> yeah Absolutely. All right. So the question I ask everybody, Becky, is how do you define healing today? Mm. Oh, well, wow. I definitely think it's unique to everyone. Yeah. Um, I am fortunate right now to I feel like, um, you know, there's not a chronic illness in my body. Um, I, I, what I what first came to me when you um, mentioned it, it's just that whole holistic approach and that holistic feel. And it goes back to that whole idea of flow and yeah. your energy because it's feeling good on all levels. Um, so you might have a healthy body, but your mind might be all over the place. And which means your anxiety is probably through the roof or, um, you know, emotionally, you just got so many different things going on and things just aren't in a good settled place. So there's just so many parts of us. And I feel like when, and it, and it doesn't, it doesn't mean they all have to be perfect, but I think it just means finding that sweet spot, that good place where, okay. I'm, and, and really, I, I think it comes down to that self care again and creating either making sure you're doing those those things that you do every day that support you or creating and finding tools that support you. So if mm-hmm. one part of your life is a little um, out of, you know, alignment, um, then okay, I've got this tool. I'm going to meditate more. I'm going to um, bring in this affirmation more, do some breathing, whatever it is for you, essential oil, you know, whatever to focus a little more on that. And that starts to kind of bring it back in. It's, you know, um, Mm. so yeah, it's, it's holistic. Um, it doesn't have to mean the physical body. There's like a, an issue that needs to be healed. I just think for me, it's definitely mental, physical, emotional, it's all whole, connected. The whole yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I, I'd like to, in my mind, I like to think of it as like we all have this medicine bag we carry and we get to move through life and decide what our medicines and tools are, like you're saying. Right. And right. they can be literal or figurative, but they move us away out of um, a place of stagnancy or that stuckness and into right. action. And action is flow and action can even be spaciousness and stillness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, so I love that, that it's about finding our tools and understanding what they are and then reaching toward them when we need them, identifying when we need them, and then actually activating them and using them. Yeah. yeah. And Beautiful. I think another important thing that I'm, you know, it's like, you know how sometimes you, you share these things with others, but you don't necessarily <laughs> practice them yourself, mm-hmm. until, yourself until you finally... But what I'm what I'm finally getting is just how um, oh um, you know we're just moving through these things. We're moving through this whole human experience, and it's not. It's like it's we're not striving for for that. I just want to be happy, and then expect to just be happy all the time. Yeah. Um, you know we are we are creatures that flow. You know and um, Dynamic. We're going to have our up times and our down times, and 
it's just how you move through them. And I think just knowing, okay, this is a really, it's a rough patch in my life right now, but I'm getting through it. I'm moving through it. And through it, of course, you're gaining more tools, different tools, learning something new. But gosh, when you're there, it's just so hard to remember that. You just feel mm-hmm. like this is it. This is it. Yeah. You know, and it's just, you feel stuck. And um, so trying to remember that, trying to kind of um, almost like zoom out and kind of look down on yourself in a bigger perspective. Like it's not just this one moment. It, this is a, a bigger um there's a bigger picture here, you know, and this is just one little blip. <laughs> yeah, this like, too shall pass, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And I that leads us beautifully into me mentioning the beautiful workshop offering you've created for Spectrum this year, because to me, I see that as a tool, as a as a something that people yeah. can put in their their little medicine bag, you know, do the right. reflective work, hands on in it, and then have something to look back at, a touchstone to this idea. And your workshop is called Journey Cards, Supporting Your Soul with Strength, Sustenance, and Steady Inspiration. So thank you, Becky, for being here with us today and chatting about these things and for all of your insights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you. I loved it. It was great. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>